Hello and welcome to Imperator Rome. This is the new game by Paradox. It's been described as a little bit of EU4, a little bit of CK2, and a little bit of Victoria 2. All kind of mixed together, and from what I've seen so far, it looks fantastic. So, we are going to be playing up here in the north. We're going to be playing as Caledonia. And why are we playing as someone so far flung, so far away from the action down in Rome? Well, it's because I like a challenge. I want to build us up. I want to create a brilliant kingdom up here in these islands. And then I want to take on Rome once they have built up to strength. That is my goal in this series, is to build up Albion and take on Rome. And talk of that, we have a decision that kind of fits us, which is Unite Albion. So what we need to do is we need to get everything that is green right there. That needs to all be ours, pretty much, right? So it's going to be difficult because right now what we control is this little bit right up the top there. But we will eventually get more power, get more control and get ourselves down and take the rest of that. But that's long term goals. Short term, what are we looking for? Well. We have to somehow take control of some land. And I'm going to attack this guy. This guy being the leader of the local power of Taxalia. So what's a local power? Well, let's get into that first. If we have a look at ranks, we have lots and lots of different powers in the game. You have major powers. They're your very, very big empire. So if we go and have a look down here, we have Thyergia, we have the Seculids, you know, very, very, very big places. We have uh, Carthage and Egypt. You know, they're the big powers. Next one down, we have Macedon, we have Iberia, we have Albania. These are all your quite big, but not as big powers, right? And I think Rome is currently in that group as well, although I could be wrong. It might not be. Uh, and then when we get down to the next one, we have local powers. So these are people who are kind of you know, they're the big fish in a small pond. Locally, they're quite well known. But once you get beyond that, not so much. So these are your ones that control a little bit more land. So I think it's 25 to 99 cities is what it is. Oh, no, it's regional. So local powers are 2 to 24 cities. That's their just strength size. That, I believe, is what we, we fit into, although we might just be one. Uh, I think we are multiple cities, though. Cities, of course, um, are a new thing in the game. Like... Previously, all of these squares would be called provinces in a different Paradox game. Uh, in this one, they're called cities. So we have three cities, so we would be a local power. And we can go and prove that we're a local power. Makes a lot of sense. But, uh, yes, there are local powers. And then if we get all the way down here, you can see that we have city-states. And they are just one city. So, we're a local power. So it makes sense that we would want to expand and become a regional power because you get certain bonuses with that. If we go and have a look at the regional powers up here a little bit. Uh, the These are all local powers. There we go. We go and have a look at the regional powers. They get all these extra bonuses. So they get capital import routes. They get diplomatic relations that they're allowed to have. So I think those are relationships of other countries. They have diplomatic range so they can uh, get alliances from further afield. They can also have more clan chiefs. Clan chiefs are basically, if we go and have a look at our government, there are multiple clan chiefs and they can hold um, an amount of land. And then they are also eligible to become the new chief when your current one dies. Now, this isn't Crusader Kings in terms of your characters. Yes, they have traits. Yes, they have opinions. Yes, they have goals, all of that sort of stuff. It's a little bit more than EU4 where you just get a name. But um, you don't play as them. You play as the nation. We are playing as Caledonia. Although our current um, person is this one. If we die, we will still be playing Caledonia. Except we'll be playing as that guy. It's as simple as that. So yeah, we want to expand so we can become better. Uh, we also want to expand because if we don't, we're going to quickly get outpaced by every other big nation out there. So we just basically want to punch above our weight a little bit to start with. So, before we can expand... We need to get an army and be ready to attack. So if we go and have a look at him right now, we cannot attack straight away. It's the 1st of November and it is when we can start attacking. So that's when I want to declare war. Before that point, we will need some troops. We currently have 7,000 troops, which is all right. But this guy right here, he currently has 9,000 troops. So first thing I think we should do 
is use some of our manpower up here. These are basically all of our resources up at the top here. So we've got gold and manpower, which are fairly similar to EU4 in terms of how they work. Then you have military power, civic power, oratory power, and religious power, which kind of work in the same way as the diplo points and the admin points from EU4. Stability, again, kind of works the same as EU4. Different um, advantages, um, different disadvantages, but, you know, essentially it's the same kind of thing. And then we have aggressive expansion, um, which, again, similar to other games in Paradox stuff in terms of it's making everyone else around you unhappy at you if you expand too much. Um, but it also has some internal effects. And then we have Tyranny, which is basically something that makes people internally not like you. If, say, you've been imprisoning your rivals and all that sort of stuff, that's where that kind of comes in. Right. Uh, so, we want to build up. What kind of troops can we have? So, if I go to the Macro Builder here, um, we can have Archers. Uh, can we have Camels? No. So, we can't build them because we lack Camels. That makes sense. I was just confused there for a second. But we can have Archers. We can have... Uh, can we have... Chariots? We could have chariots if we want. It costs quite a lot, but we could have them. Heavy cavalry? Can't have it because we lack horses. I gotta ask, if we lack horses, then how can we have chariots? I, I would assume that chariots would have horses in front of it, but apparently ours do not. We just have a person there. Maybe you need more horses than one or something like that. We're gonna have a look at our trade goods. Right now, we just have fish and base metals. Okay, fair enough. Right, so... Uh, we could build those. Uh, we could build warriors. Nope, we can't build warriors, actually. We don't have any iron. Horse archers. Again, I'm going to guess you need horses. Skirmishers. So these are kind of our normal melee troops, I would imagine. Yep. Uh, they they don't do a lot against archers, but um, that's fine. And then we have war elephants, which I assume you need elephants for. Yep. And then galleys, which uh, we cannot do because we don't have any ports. Okay, makes sense. So let's get ourselves, I'm not entirely sure what we need, but if he has nine, let's, um, let's like double the size of our army slightly. Well, maybe add an extra half onto it. So we'll get two skirmishers and two archers. Something like that. See how it works out. Right. So now we're doing that. We do have an unused trade route in our capital. And trade routes basically allow you to get trade goods, which give you different bonuses and bring in income. So it seems like a good thing to grab right now. I'm thinking we should grab something that helps our military. Now, we already have base metals, which would have been quite good because it increases the speed at which we can get extra armies, but um, we already have it, so we don't need it. Leather would also have been good because it does the same thing, but we can't get that because nobody near... Uh, sorry, we go to leather. Nobody nearby is willing to trade us um, leather because they will lose a bonus for doing so, and they also just don't like us. So let's see what we got. Starting experience could be quite useful. So that means our new troops would come in with a little bit more experience than usual, which would seem like a good idea. Or we could go for, oh, we don't have wild game vegetables. That would get us a um, better supply limit. I think I'm going to go for the starting experience. And we're going to trade with, let's just make sure I'm not trading with the people I'm about to attack. Uh, so if I switch to the political map mode. Uh, let's trade with these people. Um, actually, is there someone further afield that we can trade with here? Uh, who, who are they? So... Oh, they're down there. Yeah, we're not going to attack... Yeah, we're not going to have any kind of contact with them for ages. So, let's trade with them. So, in here, into trade route, and we're just going to trade for some of that with those guys. Right. So, we get some extra starting experience for our troops, which seems like a generally pretty good idea. Right. Now we've done that, uh, we also have inventions. So insp inventions are what you spend this on, civic power. And civic power is basically just, you know, it's, it's your points that you spend for inventions. You get it over time. All of these come basically from your ruler as well. So you get like a base amount plus some from your ruler. So if we go and have a look at ourselves here, we currently have, um, I think I'm on the wrong map mode. Ah, there we go. We currently have one marshal, one finesse, Three Charisma and six Zeal, and you can see how it affects it. I think you get half, yeah, you get half of whatever your value is rounded down. So, we've got one one extra um, oratory, um, three extra religious. So, religious is kind of our strongest suit, but none of these are very good. I have seen some of these go up to like 12. I'm sure they can go higher than that, or maybe they can't, but, you know, essentially... One is fairly bad in terms of that. Six is not even very good. I mean, if we go and have a look at some of our neighbors, I'm sure we can see better values. Like, 
Yeah, so he's up at an 8 charisma. We're going to have a look at this person. 9 martial. So we're really quite a bad character. In fact, who's our heir? We're going to have a look at our heir. Yeah, even if we died right now, we would end up with a much better character. So, yeah, it's an interesting um, situation that we're in. We're also quite young, so I don't imagine that we're uh, going to die off before our heir comes into power. Anyway, um, let's have a look at what we want to do here with our invention stuff. So we have 175, so we can get one invention. So I'm looking for something military-like. So army morale recovery seems pretty good. Uh, we also have military tech investments. So that would make our military tech cheaper, I think. Or would that just give us more... Mil I think, actually, I think that might just increase our research speed. Starting experience, we could really lean into that. I'm not sure how important it is, but you know what? Let's find out. Let's get some extra starting experience for our troops. And it's said that the best way to learn is by doing. We expect our recruits will learn swiftly with a sword in their hands, or they will die. Yeah, pretty much how I'm seeing things right now. So we've got that one. And the next one we need to look at is omens. So omens are basically blessings from the gods that you can pay for with your omen power. Now, how much do these... These cost 200, so we can get a singular omen. Discipline? Uh, it doesn't tell us what discipline gives us. If I go and have a look at our army here, can we see exactly what discipline gives us? Um... No, I'm not going to spend too long on it. I'm assuming it's going to be si similar to um, other games that have discipline in it. It's going to be something that makes our army fight better. Could also increase our national manpower to make our manpower recover quicker. So we'd, well, it wouldn't make our ma manpower recover quicker. It would give us more total manpower. And your manpower recovery speed is based upon your uh, total manpower. So that, that could potentially be useful for us. Could also do something to try and make us get more money. Potentially that could allow us another way uh, through some of our issues. We could also get unrest. I think I'm going to go for discipline. I'm all about making our armies fight better because we're fighting a stronger enemy. And that seems like the kind of thing we want to do. And this one's basically saying we have a bad research ratio. Uh, we currently uh, get zero... Wait, is that saying we currently have zero research coming in? I think that's might be what that's saying. Okay, and I think that's because all of our pops are currently tribesmen which don't bring in any sort of research. We have different populations here. Um, we would want to move some up to being citizens, and citizens would, there would then be able to get us research points, which would then push our research forward. That's longer-term goals. I'm not worried about being the smartest person right now. I just want to be the person with the most land. Right. So I'm going to unpause the game, and we're going to see how this all plays out. Because all of this is in theory. None of this is tested. So, let's have a look. So, everything's going off. Oh, one thing we should do, actually, is we should see if we can get an ally. If we can get an ally down here, they could turn out to be very useful. And we can only get alliances with other local powers. So, we can only get alliances with people who are of, of, a, sing, uh, of a similar size to us. In fact, what I could do is I can go to us here. And I can say I only want people who are in my region. So, actually, the only regional power here is uh, Tridatania, which is where... I mean, I'm not entirely sure that's quite my region, but whatever. That, okay, so we don't need to worry about them. Uh, yeah, we're looking for people kind of down here. So actually, if, we, if everyone, no one down here is a regional power, we can get an alliance of any of them. Let's see, how about this one? Uh, although those would kind of be our next target. Could get an alliance with this one. I assume they could travel around the top here and then be able to join us. Let's see, do they want... No, uh, oh, need to go to that one. They want an alliance. They would actually be quite happy with an alliance, yeah. They have no negative reasons for it. Yeah, let's take an alliance. Let's see what they say. Uh, they have accepted the military alliance. Fantastic news. That's what I like to see. Anyone else we want a military alliance with? Um, we could try with these guys, although I am going to see eventually we're going to come into conflict, uh, conflict with them, but maybe that's not a big deal. Um, the only problem would be that they won't have an... Oh, no, actually, if we're in the war of them, they should have a way through here with military access. So maybe maybe we'll just try and get an alliance with the bigger people for just now. Let's get another alliance. Let's see if we can drag them into this. Yeah. Okay, so we got a couple of military alliances, which should help us out a lot. Now, does this guy, did this guy get any military alliances? Uh, I don't think so. I think they would show up here. We can check ours, actually. Yeah, they would show up here. So... We have no, he has no kind of alliances, although we might get them before the 1st of November, you never know. 
Let's unpause it, let things carry on a little bit, and see exactly what we can do. Now, our troops haven't fully built yet. I am actually going to move these ones down here, just while we're uh, waiting for war. Um, now, I believe everything in here as well, actually, is forests. So attackers get negatives for um, like attacking into provinces. Actually, into cities. These are called cities. Um, it's a bit confusing because in CK2, the individual ones are called provinces. But yeah, I'll try and keep the terminology right for the game. Uh, just going to move everybody down here for just now. Also going to try and just merge up the armies. Armies are kind of interesting, by the way, because you can actually set objectives for them, and they'll kind of automate themselves. So if you want to do something like, say, um, hey, go forward and look for enemies but don't engage, you can do that, and then you don't have to control them. So for larger army management, we could do that. Right now, I'm just going to stick to nice small armies, but we'll see. We'll see. So I could have declared war right now, but I'm waiting for our troops to get into position before we declare any sort of war. It just seems sensible. We are taking some attrition up here. Why are we taking attrition? Oh, because it's winter. That makes sense. So we are going to be losing some manpower, but that's alright. So we're all here. Can I merge these armies, or...? Um... You can only do it when two are selected. Okay. Uh, no, I can't do that, apparently. Hmm. Thought you could... Is there a way of merging the art? Oh, merge selected units. Oh, I can't merge them? Uh, the clan chief is refusing to give up. Ah, right, yes. So, um, what that's saying, basically, is that uh, clan chiefs, when they hold, uh, they can be in charge of your armies, and they will basically control that army for all intents and purposes. So they, they will choose what to do. You can suggest to them what you'd like them to do, but most of the time, they, they can choose what to do. Right now, this guy, if we go and have a look at his army, um, uh, I th uh, there should be somewhere here where it says how... Uh, is it in here? Not entirely sure. I think these are actually his troops. But I'll say, basically, there's somewhere you can find out where how loyal they are to that guy. And that's what um, that's mentioning. Anyway, uh, let's just mer- Oh. Let's just mer- We can't merge those. Clan chief is refusing to give up control. Oh, that's not, that's not us. Oh, okay. So actually, both of these are controlled by other clan leaders. So now that's that's all of our army, and then we can select a commander for our army, can't we? Um, maybe not. Maybe we don't have any valid commanders. Oh no, there we go. We have to select that one. Select a commander. Uh, and we're just going to choose the guy with the best marshal right now. He appears to have a few bonuses, which might help or might not help. Although I'm not sure how much the war elephant discipline is going to help right now. But yeah, we'll choose that guy. He'll lead our army. That's all right. Perfect. Right. Um, that's fine. And we can see that they actually start with a little bit of experience, which reduces the damage in combat. Oh, well, that seems quite useful. Um, now, is that, that's not all of our army raised up, because we had some more building, didn't we? Uh, I'm sure we had some more building. Maybe, maybe not. Actually, that, that could... No, that is all of them. That's all 4,000. Perfect. Well, let's declare a war, then. Has he got any allies yet? No. Nope. Well, we may not have a reason to declare war. Is there any kind of way that we can get a Cassus Belly? The, re the reason to declare war. We could fabricate a claim for 200 oratory power. That seems like quite a lot. That is all of our power, but it would mean that we don't have to take the negatives of declaring war without one. So if we declare war without a reason, we get minus two penalty. So does this take any amount of time? Uh, or does this just give us a, a reason? No. No, that's it. We, we, just have a, we just have a claim, don't we? Oh, no. We have to wait till... Uh, oh, we have to wait for a month. We have to wait for a reply for a fabricate claim. It seems quite odd. Hey, we'd like your land. All right. Uh, no, no, you can't have it. Seems seems like a, an odd one, but that's fine. Declare that. Wait until the 30th of January, and then we can declare our war. There we go. We've been invited to a defensive league by them. I th I think we're gonna I think we're gonna decline that because I'm gonna declare a war on you. Yeah. So, we're going to declare the war. Uh, our war goal is to take their province, which seems to make a lot of sense. We can call our allies, and of course I am going to call our allies. We want to absolutely crush this war, and this is the easiest way to do it. Declare war. Yes. So, they have honored their alliance. Fantastic. And they also honored their alliance. So, we have two very strong people down there. And we have ourselves, and we are going to war. So, it's going to march our way over there. And start sieging some stuff down. 
Uh, actually, another thing we should do before we go into that is... Oh, that's the wrong one. I want to select this army. We can also change their tactics. So right now, they set a shock action where we get zero bonuses here. Um, we could set ourselves to something like skirmishing where we get different effectiveness depending on what type of armies we have around. And that, that just basically gives us a little extra bonus, which I think seems like a good idea. Take the bonus rather than just not take the bonus. Can we do that for our allied troops as well? Yep. So they appear to be, uh, that one's all skirmishers, isn't it? Or all light infantry? Yep. Uh, and then this one's mixed like us, and you know, we're still going to select the same one. Okay, so it does appear like we're controlling where they go. That seems fine. Right. We'll head our way over here. What's the skull mean? Attrition. Ah, that's how much attrition they're taking. Well, that makes sense, yeah. March our way over here. It's going to take a while, but that's fine. Arbitrary demands. Uh, Katizi... Katisena, Korea, our arbitrator, has sent, have sent us a demand for more funding to do her job properly. The appeal for more gold seems a bit arbitrary, but we have noticed certain issues when it comes to that office lately. Though it seems a bit outrageous, not sending her the money would probably end up causing issues down the line. Okay, so I can give her 26 gold. Are we still making money? We are still making money. Or I can say... She has already received enough for this job, and that affects her loyalty. Ah, there we go. So there's where some of the loyalty comes in here. This would also give us 25 civic power, which would get us enough so that we could do another um, another invention, which might be very useful right now. Uh, so it's basically 26 um, gold for um, extra civic power, and we also get more free man happiness, which doesn't really affect us because we don't have any free men. But we, it also makes it cheaper to convert populations between different things. So if we wanted to go in here and say, hey, this tribesman, I want to uh, convert him. Uh, as, oh, that's convert population. Oh, convert to our religion. Oh, okay. I was thinking convert like promote. Oh, okay. That's fine. But basically we can change them to be a different population. So we can say like, I want to make this person a free man. And it will cost me... Um, 11 uh, oratory power, but apparently we can't do that due to an- oh, while an event demands your attention. Oh, I guess that's so you can't cheese events somehow. Um, I'm gonna take it. It seems like a good idea for us. Uh, it does open the opportunity for us to get an invention if we want to, though. Could be good. Uh, what kind of stuff could we want? Um, the fabricate claim cost could be quite nice. It lowers the amount that we have to pay by 20 each time, which could work out. Um... We could get some, like, national tax. I do like always having money. And one of the nice things about money in this one is that if we go to our economy, we can turn money into power. So that could potentially be a good way to go. If we just uh, get as much money as possible, we can get more power. Um, You know, I'm talking myself into it. I quite like national tax as a way to go here. Um, The other one is military tech. We can uh, potentially do something with that. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna go for something that seems like it can't go wrong. More money, you know? More money, what what could go wrong? Right, so we'll continue heading up here. Now there are forts, which will take longer to capture, and then there are non-fort provinces, which is where we're heading now. Oh, they're recruiting chariots here, which will finish before we arrive, I think, potentially. So we, we are gonna get into a battle straight away. Yeah, so they get 1,000 that have appeared, but they are going to be very, very quickly wiped out by us. We attack in. We can see the different tactics that we've got here. Different troop types that we got. They only have chariots. I'm assuming our 11,000 should be enough, but we'll see. Uh, can I speed that up? Oh, on pause. That's fine. Oh, I guess it slows down while you're in battle. That makes sense. Oh, we've also captured uh, someone. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Not sure what we can do with imprisoned people. Uh, we can banish them and get some tyranny. And then their family would lose prestige. We can execute them. Uh, in which we have to pay our religious power to get tyranny. Blog. That would make them lose popularity and health. Okay, or we can just release them. And then that would get us... Um, if they have no home country, that will get us some extra loyalty. Interesting. So they're not going to have any home country soon. So we'll see how that goes. Are our allies able to come up? Yeah, so they're taking the route I thought they would. They're going all the way around. I didn't think their neighbor would be likely to give them um, access to us. But that's fine. 
they will walk all the way around. I don't know if they're going to be needed, but I, I felt like calling in the allies anyway seemed like a good idea. Now, is this like Crusader Kings where calling in allies makes them dislike you more? Um, No, no, they, they're barely happy with us, to be honest with you. They don't really care that we call them into a war. Well, that's fantastic. Right. We're taking that province, uh, not province, that city. I think they only have two. If we check the political map mode, it's a little easier to see. Yeah, they only had two to start with. So once we get here, it's actually 10,000 versus 11,000. I'm going to stop and wait. Uh, sorry, that's um, 11,000 versus 9,000. I'm going to stop and wait for our ally to get here. Because if we attack right now, we're attacking um, into forest. And I assume that's a river crossing as well. Not that I know if that makes too much difference. Does it tell me what I'm attacking into if I do that? No, it doesn't. Okay. That's fine. We'll wait for our ally to come around the top here. I'm just going to increase the speed while I do so. Oh, wait. Those 9,000. Those are just mercenaries. Oh, okay. Are they tied to anyone? Can I see if they're hired by anyone? Or are they those just... I think we're not hostile to them because it's not red. I'm going to attack in it and then we're going to find out. Let's see. Let's try it. If we lose... What's the worst that happens? Oh, nothing. Oh, there were already mercenaries sieging that land down? Or are we now in charge of the siege? I think we're now in charge of the siege. siege? Oh, we're victorious. Oh, no, that was being some random people who appeared. Oh, there were 10,000 there. There are just also mercenaries in this. We're just hanging around in the province. Oh, okay, that's fine. Well, I'm not going to worry about that. We're going to siege here. We're sitting in forests, so it's going to be more difficult for them to attack into us. That's fine. Currently at war of them. Um, so are they... I'm trying to figure out. Are they in multiple wars here? Um, oh, he is. All oh, right. So he's in a... No, no. This is all the same war. I'm just trying to figure out what he's doing there. I think he's, I think he's just sitting in that province. I think he just got military access and has decided to sit there. Doesn't bother me. I assume we get 100% uh, war score if we just win the war. Um... Like, if we take all the provinces. Uh, Alright, so they attacked in. They're now retreating back. That's fine. And then more attacking into our allies. And they're continuing to lose. Fantastic news. And they're just going to pile into our allies non-stop by the looks of it. Not an issue for me. We'll continue our siege. A child has been born. A daughter has been born to us. And they're being called a Latuka. I think that's us anyway. Is that us? Uh, It is us. Fantastic. We, we have a daughter. Cool. Right. Um, not that makes a great deal of difference, but, you know, it's neat. Um, oh, right. They, they are winning because the morale was very low. I was thinking that's a very small number attacking in there, but yeah, okay. They still won because morale is low. So they're basically just going to chase him back and forth, I think. Oh, and that wiped them out, I think, there, potentially. Yeah, it looks like they wiped them out anyway. We're still sieging. Still going on. Uh, I can show you the... Uh, it's on there. I can show you the siege um, mode here. So what, what actually affects the siege here? So the siege length is affected by your characters, potentially, I think. Wait. Are those characters or are those dif dif different things? I'm not entirely sure what those are. But yeah. Anyway. We don't need to worry about it. Sieges will, ha will take as long as they're going to take right now. We will take this province. Uh, there's a water shortage. And then... Defenders, something. Then, we're still at 42%. What's the chances of surrender are 36% uh, chance of surrender each time. Oh, and that was apparently 100% chance because it just happened. Okay. The siege lasted. We gained some popularity, which is nice. And we now have a 100% war score. So, I'm going to sue for peace. Right. So, um... What do we want? So we can ask for a single city or a province. I'm going to ask for the province. It was the war goal, after all. Uh, and I'm also going to ask for um, uh, any money that they had remaining. That doesn't seem too bad. We get one aggressive expansion. It on it's only 21 um, war, score war score to take what we're asking for. And we have 100. So that's definitely going to be fine. Uh, that amount of aggressive expansion, apparently, is 0.00% is what that's saying. Or is that saying what we currently have? Anyway, basically, it's not a lot of aggressive expansion. I'm just going to click OK. And the Texalian Elite. After protracted conquest, we have finally routed the Texalian armies. 
and laid waste to their lands. During the sacking of their capital, many important prisoners were taken, many of them having previously held important positions in the Taxalian clan council. They now languish in our dungeons, awaiting whatever fate we decide to impose upon them. So we can say our enemies deserve no quarter, increases our popularity, um, and kills them. We can banish them, so we would lose aggressive expansion by doing that. Okay, so you basically give up a little bit of aggressive expansion, but you're also putting out people there in the world who want to get your land, I guess. Uh, you can imprison their leaders and let the rest disappear. So we would lose popularity for that, but I guess we take it if we really wanted to imprison them for some reason. Or, or we can pass judgment on each family. Uh, I'm just going to kill them. I, I, Our aggressive expansion was nothing. The popularity, ours is fairly low at 18. So yeah, let's gain some popularity. Let's kill some people. Fantastic. They've accepted our peace offer and we now have two new provinces. So we've now gained, uh, actually I think we already had access to fur, but we now have access to woad, um, which gives us local tribesmen happiness. Oh, well that's nice. We also have some citizens here. Very nice. So that should mean that we're now starting to get tech. Yeah, now we start to get tech points and we can start to get better technology in our lands. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. This is the first episode of the series, so it really I'd really appreciate it if you would give it a like, a comment, all of that sort of stuff. It helps the series grow and it helps the channel grow. There will be another episode of this today at the normal time later uh, on today, probably around 6 o'clock. Uh, GMT, or BST is right now. Anyway, um, and I hope you will join me for that. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.